Hey guys, I'm Avesh and this is the second video for the dotted MAUI with Sync Fusion controls. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get going. In the first session, we learned what is MAUI is, how it differs from dotted core and dotted pi, and we have successfully installed and configured Visual Studio 2022 with Sync Fusion. We have also created a small application using Sync Fusion autocomplete control. In this session, we will focus on setting up the Android emulator and we will configure the emulator device to run the program and debug the existing autocomplete application that we have created in the previous session. We will also enhance the autocomplete app by binding the data and integrating the event handlers of the control. We will also run the application on the configured Android device and inspect the app that gets created on the configured device. Let's now set up the Android emulator. I have already configured the Android emulator on my Windows machine. However, I would like to bring up and show the configurations that I have already added for running this application. In the Windows search, which is available in your taskbar, type Windows features, and you should see an option that brings up the Windows feature on off dialog box. Let's quickly open and expand this. Now inspect that you should enable both Hyper-V and under Hyper-V we have Hyper-V management tools and Hyper-V platform. Ensure that both are enabled and check and you need to click on OK and restart your machine. Remember, it is very important to enable these features. With Visual Studio, you can easily test and debug your .NET MAUI app for Android in emulators and for situations where an Android device is not available. However, if hardware acceleration isn't enabled, the emulator will run very slowly. You can significantly improve the performance of the emulator by enabling these hardware acceleration flags and by using virtual device images. We will learn more about virtual devices in a moment. Just keep in mind that enabling these two flags will provide a significant boost in running the application. Now that we have completed the hypervisor settings, let's now open the Visual Studio and go to Tools, Android, Android SDK Manager, and ensure that we have selected the Android SDK Tools, Android SDK Platform Tools, Android SDK Build Tools, and more important one is under Extras, ensure to select Android Emulator Hypervisor Driver and click on apply changes and restart your machine. Now that this step is completed, the next step is to configure the Android device manager. Let me close this and open tools Android, Android device manager. Observe that I have already configured Pixel 5 device running on Android version 13 with API version 33. This is the default device provided by Visual Studio 2022 for us. You can choose or create a new device by selecting multiple options such as name, base device, processor, and OS. For now, let's continue by starting this device. In the upcoming sessions, I will try to cover configuring different devices using an Android Studio, which needs a separate installations on the Windows and Mac machines. However, let's keep the scope of this session limited to a default Pixel device. Also, I promise that I will cover setting up an iOS device in one of the upcoming sessions by using my Mac Pro. Let's now start this device. Click on the Start button, and you notice that a pop-up shows up with the Android emulator. Now, let's switch back to the Visual Studio project and select the application that we have created earlier. In the earlier session, we focused on debugging the application on Windows machine. Let's now focus on debugging the application on the Android device, which is currently our Pixel device that we have created just now. You can choose the end device debugging option from the drop down menu and select the device that we have created just now. Let's select Android emulator and Pixel 5 and let's run this application on Pixel 5. Notice that the application is now running in debug mode. Even during the debug mode, 
the application is installed on the Android device simulator. Let's now switch back to our topic of discussion. Autocomplete or word completion is a feature to speed up human and computer interaction using a predictive text approach. Many autocomplete algorithms learn new words after the user has written them many times. You might have observed this behavior in Google search. The word prediction software or autocomplete was first introduced to help people with physical disabilities to increase their typing speed and decrease the number of keystrokes. It was also introduced to help those who write material, especially for those who frequently use lengthy, difficult to spell terms and maybe technical or medical in nature like for doctors. Later, autocomplete scope was extended to web browsers, email programs, search engines, source code editors, database query tools, command line interpreters, and many more. Now that we are aware of how frequently it is applied in real life, let's get started by using the Syncfusion autocomplete control and start our coding. Let's first understand the files generated during the project creation. Notice that we have app, app shell, autocomplete features, main page, and main program XAML files. Like every other .NET program, the main program bootstraps the application and it will run the application either in debug mode or in runtime mode. Let's open the main program and observe that at line number 14, we have configure sync fusion core event that wise up the sync fusion related controls. Let's now switch to the app shell XAML file and observe that under the shell, we have shell content, which has the content template property pointing to the autocomplete feature file as the data template. And we have a route property pointing to the autocomplete feature file. This means once the application executes, it will start with the autocomplete feature file as the first page. Let's now switch to the autocomplete feature XAML file. The autocomplete feature XAML file is built on content page template. There are many other templates which are available in MAUI. Some of them are flyout page template, navigation page, and tab page templates. We will explore all of those options in the upcoming sessions. For now, let's stick with the content page template. The content page has the class property assigned to the code behind file. Also, the content page binding context is configured to social media view data model binding. Syncfusion autocomplete control is automatically created during the project creation and bind it to the social media context. There are other properties already enabled by default during this project creation process. On the right side of the Visual Studio, we have the XAML live preview option that integrates with auto refresh or hot reload feature. This feature helps in faster development as the changes made are reflected immediately in the live preview window. This helps the developers to make the corrections immediately without even switching to the Android device emulator. Let me quickly change the title and show you the same. Let me change it to the autocomplete demo and observe that even before saving this file, notice that the autocomplete is changed to autocomplete demo on the right side of the XAML live preview mode. Now that we have understood the files generated in the project creation process, let's inspect the item source property and this item source property is binded to social medias. What is social media's property and how is it populating the social media list? To understand that, let me now switch back to the code file. In this file, we have social media class file, which holds the properties name and ID. And we have a social media view model file, which holds the observable collection of this social media object. And within this construction of social media view model, you notice that we are adding a lot of social media objects, which are of Facebook, Google Plus, Instagram, and etc. And we are populating this observable collection with all of these objects. Once these objects are created, if you switch back to the example, the social medias, which is the real object, which is holding the list is binded as item source, this autocomplete control. And this item source is wrapped as a social media view model binding context. I hope now it is very clear for you on how the social media view model and the social media's item source are binded to the Syncfusion autocomplete control.
Let's now inspect some of the properties of this control. Take search more property, enable search and filtering of the data and is available with two options. One is to search the text where that starts with a keyword and the other is to search with contains keyword. Let me change this. Both of these options are self-explanatory. The other properties that are not limited to our placeholder where let me put the placeholder here and choose social media and we can also add placeholder color let me choose do here and the stroke of the placeholder under the text let me make it as green there are many other properties given by sync fusion autocomplete control i will let you explore those properties by yourself because they are very basic and simple let's make this component more dynamic by binding the data to a dynamic list instead of the static social media list that we have created. Now the question is, how do we bind the autocomplete with dynamic data? One of the options is to use an API and that API will internally connect to the DB to fit some of the list of the records such as countries list, employee list, or any other custom list. However, creating API and connecting to the database is out of scope of this session for autocomplete. And to mitigate this, there are many other alternatives such as we can bind the data using some of the community NuGet packages that are already available in the market. Let's proceed by choosing NuGet package manager and add countries list as we will be binding the countries list to this autocomplete control. Right click on the dependencies and try to add the NuGet package. Observe that manage you get packages is disabled. That's because the application is right now in debugging mode. Let me stop this application. Right click on the dependencies again and click on manage you get packages. Let me browse the new get packages and try to search for country once it is loaded. Let me search for country. Let me pick this package, the first one. Let me install this package. Package installation is successful. Let me switch back to the code and start adding relative code to make this package working. Let's use the package use using major dot country and let's create a public class similar to the social view model. Let me create another class called public class country. Let me name it as country view model. And let's create a public property with an observable collection of I country info. And let's name it as countries. Once this is done, let me create a constructor public country view model. And let's try to use a declaration variable country provider equal to new country provider. Let's say this dot countries, I'm assigning it to countries equal to country provider dot get countries. Now observe that this returns as the I enumerable list. We need to convert this to observable collection. How do we do that? Let's type in dot to observable collection. That's it. We are done. We have created a country view model and a public property here, and this is ready to be consumed in the XAML file. Let's now switch back to the XAML file and change the binding context here. Let me comment this for now and create a new context which consumes the country view model. And the second thing to do is change the item source from binding to social medias to countries. That's all. Save the application and the file and start debugging the application. Notice that the application is running successfully on the emulator device. Observe that this is still select a social media. Let me change this to select a country. All right, 
Let me type in some country name starting with United Kingdom or something like that. I don't see any list being populated. That means we have done some mistake in this autocomplete. Let's inspect this. All right. We missed binding the property called display member path. What is display member path? Display member path displays the list of an item. Now, what is the display member path for this country NuGet package? Let me switch back to the package and inspect the icon tree info. The common name will be the display member path. Let me copy it, come back and paste it over here. Now, let's switch back to them later and choose United Kingdom again. See, we have been presented with multiple options and we can go ahead one of this option here. Let's now switch back to the code and add selection changed event to notify the selected country. Let me add selection changed event here. It prompts to choose a new event handler. Let me press enter. What is that? It has created a selection changed event. Let me switch back to the C sharp code of example. Observe that there is an autocomplete selection changed event already created. Let's now add some code to show an alert box with the selected country. Let me write the code. Variable C is equal to autocomplete dot selected value. Let's typecast it to high country info. Let's do a display alert. Display alert of country selected will be the title of this alert. Let's choose C dot common name, comma. Let's mark the cancel button as close. Let me format this. Let me add some conditions here. Okay. Autocomplete not equal to null and autocomplete dot selected value is not equal to null then let's add this stuff all right we are now ready let me restart the application again let me select the country here united kingdom choose the selection from the list notice that there is a display alert pop-up with the selected country and we click on close with this we have successfully binded on selection changed event for the autocomplete with this we have successfully explored the autocomplete control in the next session we will explore another sync fusion control that's all for now thank you for listening and have a great day